The Lamar Jackson to Patrick Mahomes comparisons go on as the slander continues for the Baltimore Ravens quarterback. We talk about the latest, what's going on, and why a lot of it is unjustified. Come up next year on Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker, Ravens Wire, coming to you from the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for being here and making Locked On Ravens your first listen each and every single day. Free and available, all podcasts and platforms that includes in video form on YouTube and audio form wherever you get your shows. You can hit subscribe and that like button on YouTube really helps out a ton. If you're in audio form, hit and subscribe, hit and follow anywhere you get your podcasts. Really helps out as well. But five days a week here on Lockdown Ravens, even in the offseason. So even though there are no, there's no more Ravens football for next six or seven months here, we're still bringing you five days a week Ravens content plus bonus content on top of that live shows and a lot more. Really excited for what we have planned for the offseason here. So tell a friend, tell a family member. I'm also on Twitter at KaleShucker34. Also trying to start on my Instagram again. That's also at KaleShucker34. So you can follow me over there. Today's episode of Locked on Ravens is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. We're back here. No football. The Chiefs, they are the champions. Again, back-to-back as they beat the San Francisco 49ers. But with that win, Lamar Jackson has yet again found his way back into the spotlight as we got some... People talking about Lamar Jackson, and if you clicked on this video or clicked on this show, you're saying, well, comparisons to Mahomes with Lamar, what are you talking about? Mahomes has three rings, Lamar doesn't. I'm not talking about those type of comparisons. I'm talking about Lamar's getting stacked up with Mahomes and stacked up with Brady, and we're going to talk about that because Lamar's accomplishments have been pushed down, and we're going to talk about a lot of this stuff, too, because, look, the playoff record is there, the playoff non-success, I guess, if you want to call it for Lamar's there. And I'm, I'm not trying to shy away from that. We'll get into that as well. But we have to talk about kind of the landscape of what the NFL has been and some of the comments that are being made about Lamar Jackson as it pertains to a Mahomes, as it, as it pertains to a Tom Brady. So I'm not saying, oh, well, they're comparing Lamar to Mahomes in terms of legacy because they're so similar. No, Mahomes has three rings. Brady has six. Lamar has none. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Lamar getting stacked up with those guys. So we'll get into it. And then we'll also dive into a bit more of the of the slander conversation, but not too much because, again, we're, we're moving away from that as we're moving into the offseason. So we're going to be getting into some Ravens free agents, and I put out the whole list all on Twitter yesterday. We're going to get into that list, and that's what we, we'll be focusing on here as the offseason does continue for the Ravens, right? Right in the – not the thick of it yet. I think once we get into, like, March, April, obviously that's when it is, May. But a lot of stuff here to get to on Locked on Ravens. So let's start off with this – Lamar getting stacked up with Patrick Mahomes here. And the clip that I want to first talk about is Shannon Sharp. He was talking with Chad Ochocinco on their podcast Nightcap right after the Super Bowl. And Shannon said this. He said, quote, Lamar won a second MVP, but at what point in time do we start holding him accountable and say that's underachieving? Now, at some point in time, he's going to have to cash the MVPs and turn them into Super Bowls. Now, that second part I don't disagree with, right? Lamar is going to have to start to win in the big moments. And he won in a big moment in the, in the divisional round against Houston, but then obviously in the championship game, definitely did not play his best football. And the playoff record obviously is, is two and four. So that's not great. But I think what, you know, in this clip, Shannon also talked about Mahomes and the quote unquote big game hunter that he is. And, and Mahomes is that, right? He's been that. He's won three Super Bowls. He's clutch moment after clutch moment, right? We've seen Patrick Mahomes do that. But the way the NFL has been, we we got to witness Tom Brady and those Patriots for years, decade plus of that dynasty in New England. And then a lot of the comparisons were, okay, well, Tom Brady is the GOAT. He has six rings and this, that, and the other. And then Mahomes comes along. And you, you kind of transition from the Tom Brady dynasty Patriots to the Mahomes dynasty chiefs. And I think it's fair to call them a dynasty at this point. 
you transition to that. And then all of a sudden that becomes almost the standard because I feel like people who watch the NFL are now so used to that where Lamar's a two time MVP. That's really, really, really hard to do. He's in some elite company in doing that. He was one, one vote away from being the second, well, the first two time unanimous MVP in NFL history. Only Tom Brady's ever won one unanimous MVP outside of Lamar. So those accomplishments, I feel like, are getting pushed down here. And I've said this on Lockdown Ravens before, and I've, I've continued to preach it. What's the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is to win a Super Bowl. Regular season accolades, regular season this, regular season record, none of that matters, right? In the grand scheme of things, Super Bowls are what's the most important thing here. And Lamar has not been able to get to one. And we're talking about age here. Mahomes is 28. Lamar is 27. Mahomes has three rings. Lamar has none. And I'm not saying, oh, well, this is all on Lamar, right? Obviously, there have been some personnel things, some coaching things. But I can't just sit here and say, oh, well, it's not, none of it's on Lamar because it's, it's been all that. No, Lamar's had a part to play in that conversation. But to all of a sudden start comparing him or stacking him up against Mahomes and even Brady, if you want to go that far and say, oh, well, Lamar in his age, he's 27 years old. What, what he's done? He's, he's done nothing. That's not fair to say. Lamar hasn't done nothing. Yes, from a grand scheme of a playoff perspective, sure, the record isn't there. The success isn't there. And even if you want to talk about stats, you know, compared to some others, they're not there as well. Then you look at Josh Allen, who should you look at playoff stats? They're better than Lamar's, but Josh Allen hasn't won an MVP. Josh Allen also has not been to a Super Bowl. So, are we giving Josh Allen a pass for that? Are we stacking Josh Allen up against Mahomes? Burrow has made it to the Super Bowl, right? Got to give him credit for that. Obviously, he's had some playoff success getting to big moments, but he hasn't been able to complete the, the job, right? Mahomes has three rings. Now, Burrow was younger. Well, actually, you know, in terms of experience in the NFL, Burrow's a lot younger than Lamar, but actually age-wise, Burrow came into the league late. So Burrow's actually older than Lamar Jackson. So I think that if we're talking about it, yes, obviously Pastor Mahomes is in a tier of his own and he's going to stay in a tier of his own for probably the rest of his career, right? At this point, he has the three rings. I'm not saying nobody can catch him, but I mean, look, the three Super Bowl rings speak for themselves. The playoff success speaks for themselves. But to push down everything Lamar has done and say, oh, well, those two, those two MVPs, what are we going to say he's underachieving? From a, from a playoff perspective, fine. You can say he's underachieving, right? I think that's okay to say. But if we're talking about, oh, well, he's broken all these records, he's won two MVPs, he has all these things going for him. And to say that, you know, you look at whether it's the eye test or whatnot, team success, everything, Lamar has severely elevated everybody on that team. And I don't think it's fair to necessarily push all that down because Mahomes is having an all-time run as one of the greatest of all time. That Brady had an all-time run as one of the greatest of all time, right? Those two guys, they're up there right? The, those are the guys you, you're looking for in terms of the success and the, the playoffs and the Super Bowls and everything. Those are dynasties. Patriots and Chiefs are dynasties. But to me, I think it, it's hard for me to sit here and say, oh, well, we all of a sudden have to just knock all these other guys because Mahomes is that good. And it feels like it's only happening for Lamar at this point where sure, Josh Allen gets some flack for his turnovers and you know, for Joe Burrow, feels like he is somewhat of a, of a golden child in some way, shape, or form. But for Lamar, it's, you know, what 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 does he do well? What are his successes? Those are kind of cast aside at times. And then his mistakes can be amplified. So I'm not, I'm not trying to make excuses for Lamar in the playoffs. Obviously, what he's done has not been acceptable up to this point. And I'm not saying Lamar is anywhere close to Mahomes in terms of the playoff success and the Super Bowls and whatnot. But to say he's, you know, and Shannon didn't say he wasn't a good quarterback, right? I'm not trying to put words in Shannon's mouth. But essentially, he's he's saying, well, okay, Lamar's underachieving because he we have to hold him accountable for everything. And I get it from a playoff perspective, but we saw Peyton Manning, right? He didn't win his first Super Bowl until he was older. A, lo a lot of quarterbacks, this isn't just a Lamar thing where all these quarterbacks are winning it super young. But I think the way the league is going now the ultimate blueprint, the ideal blueprint is you get a quarterback on a rookie deal. You win with that quarterback on the rookie deal by surrounding him with pieces. And then once that extension hits, you hit on the draft picks, but it's that first four or five years spending on the fifth year option. And that's the ideal way. And the Ravens didn't get that done. Lamar Jackson did not get that done on the rookie deal. So now it's being looked at as, okay, well, now Lamar's 27. He has no rings to show for it. And I think Mahomes and his success 
is playing into it. Yeah, sure, Mahomes is 28. He has three rings. So why doesn't Lamar have one or two right now? So it's I think what comes with the greatness is you're, you're, you're held to high standards, right? And I think you absolutely should be. But to discredit Lamar for what he's done because Mahomes has been that good, to me, it, it doesn't correlate as much. I think you hold Lamar accountable for what he's done and you give Mahomes praise for what he's done, right? It's, it's both ways. You praise Lamar for what he's done, praise Mahomes for what he's done, and you hold Mahomes accountable for what he hasn't done. And same thing with Lamar. Same thing with all quarterbacks. So that's where I am on that. Coming up, we'll continue talking about some of the slander for Lamar, but also is getting into him as a player. So be sure to stay tuned. A lot to get to on Locked on Ravens. First, this show is sponsored by DoorDash. And what a football game that was, but as usual, the commercial stole the show in my book for the Super Bowl. DoorDash went all out for game day and DoorDash stuff from all the as one lucky winner, car snacks, even tax software, and somehow they pulled it off. I'm a little bummed I didn't win personally, but I, had, I got to hand it to them. It was one heck of a delivery. DoorDash is the all-in-one app for your everyday needs from restaurants and groceries to flowers and gifts. So next time you're running low on dinner ideas, pet supplies, just time you can get so much more than you realize delivered. Whatever you watch party or anything party you got coming up, get it delivered with DoorDash. Football season may be over. We're in the thick of basketball games, school year, and let's face it, also winter. I can think of a million reasons daily to order DoorDash. Hop on the app and make your day a little easier. Get dinner for the night groceries for the week or a consolation prize for your sad friends in Baltimore, San Francisco, all on DoorDash. DoorDash, your door to more. Head to the DoorDash app and get everything you need delivered. We're back our second segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Allstriker still talking with you here. We talked a little bit about Lamar in that first segment, how being compared, stacked up to with Passion Mahomes and why we shouldn't discredit Lamar for the stuff that he's done, but also not necessarily compare what he's done to a guy like Mahomes or Brady, who obviously we're seeing those as, as good outliers for them. I'm not trying to discredit what they're doing, but outlier performances for the most part, but it doesn't mean, again, that Lamar should be totally discredited for everything or discredited for everything that he's done. Some other clips surfaced from the Super Bowl, especially in the celebration. Chris Jones said that he thinks that they faced Kansas City faced the best team in the league in the Ravens. And I mean, that has to sting a little bit. And it's definitely stung me because I, I've said on this show that, in my opinion, the Ravens had their best opportunity to win the Super Bowl here with Lamar Jackson and company and, and they didn't get it done. And again, the, give the chiefs credit. I mean, they weren't the best team in the regular season. They went through some ups and downs and they were definitely trying to find an identity and work through some things. But once the playoffs came around, I mean, they, they got the job done. The Ravens were the best team in the regular season. Lamar Jackson wins the MVP, a regular season award for his stuff there. Again, should not discredit him for winning that award, but unfortunately for the Ravens, for Ravens fans, for Lamar, they, they didn't get the job done when it was needed to, to get the job done, and that is in the playoffs. So that, that's an area where no no two seasons are going to be the same, and we'll get to that in the final part of the show with free agency because the Ravens have a long, long, long laundry list of potential free agents that they're going to have to resign, and they're not going to be able to bring everybody back. It just, it just is what it is. But to me, I still – am hopeful for Lamar Jackson and what he can do. We saw some growth this year. We saw some improvement this year. I was, I was very encouraged by it. And again, I think winning in the playoffs in that moment against Houston, even though I know obviously they lost in the bigger one to Kansas city. And that's the one you had to have the win. And obviously the super bowl would have been the must must have to win, but it, I mean, the play, it's the playoffs. Every game's a must win. What are we, what are we talking about? But in my opinion, Lamar Jackson, hopefully, and I'm saying hopefully can take this as motivation and get back to that championship game next year, whether it's against the Chiefs or somebody else, and get the job done and make it to the Super Bowl, make it to that moment, and finish the job. Because, again, every year that this doesn't get done, it wastes a year of Lamar's prime. It's like every quarterback, right? I mean, Lamar is still young, still has plenty of good years of football ahead of him. But at this point, I just, I don't know. I feel, I also feel Honestly, for the Ravens, they're in a good spot with Lamar as their quarterback. Lamar is at the upper echelon of the league in terms of quarterback play. Obviously, again, Mahomes in his own tier. Now, I, I will stand by the fact I think Lamar Jackson was the best quarterback in the NFL this season, but Patrick Mahomes is still the best quarterback in the NFL, right? I, I think we can. it's fair to say both things, but without Lamar, this Ravens team is just, I mean, it's in, it's in the gutter, essentially. It's not, not that they'd be a, a zero-win team because that defense is still really good, but we've seen what, what life is like for the Ravens without Lamar. And when he's locked in, like he was in the regular season. And obviously the division around to that second half, 
we know the type of player that Lamar can be. And it's just a little bit of, you know, playing his game a little bit more. The Ravens going in their identity coaching wise a little bit more too. We can go back. We can go on and on and on about what happened in the Asian championship game. But again, we're, we're, we're moving past that at this point, Lamar's going to take the off season going to improve. I, I think the deep ball is an area he can work on. It, the deep ball was fine for Lamar in his first couple of seasons. Wasn't, you know, top of the league, but it was fine. But it has regressed over the past few years for him. So I think that's an area he can work on. But, I mean, I would hate to, and no disrespect, but like those those middle tier quarterbacks, I mean, and then you have to pay those guys sometimes because you feel like you're just stuck, right? Like Daniel Jones, Derek Carr, Jimmy Garoppolo. The Ravens are in such a good position with Lamar. And, He's in, he's in the conversation for one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He is firmly, firmly there, but he's done so much. He's improved. He's grown. And we're going to see the team that the Ravens end up building around him this off season, whether it be adding some new wide receivers in there, what the offensive line is going to look like, but to, to throw all this slander on Lamar and say, and all this stuff about, Oh, well, he, he can't win in the playoffs, So he's not a good quarterback. To me, those two things don't don't correlate, right? Again, sometimes it just takes time for these quarterbacks to get up to speed. Here, we not everybody can have the Mahomes run or the Brady run, right? Happens that way for some, and it's awesome, right? It's great for those guys and those teams, but it does not happen that way for everybody. And the fact that Lamar has a two and four playoff record, of course, I'm not going to excuse that. I'm not going to try to sugarcoat that. The stats, the the big time turnovers and big moments like that, not going to sugarcoat it, but. He's someone that the Ravens trust. I, I I trust him, but we have to start to see it a little bit more, right? I'm not, I'm not going to say that, oh, well, he can just do it, and, and he's, his track record, oh, I'm going to trust him blindly, right? We have to see that improvement. So I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing it maybe as soon as next year, right? Hopefully they get that job done. Coming up, though, we're going to be talking about the Ravens' free agent list. There are plenty of them on there. We'll have a lot to get to here coming up on Locked on Ravens. First, this show is sponsored by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus plus money winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. But on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. I'm a big number Nuggets guy. If you didn't know that, you're, you're going to learn. I'm, I, I'm a big Nuggets guy. And you're in pretty safe territory if you bet anything Nikola Jokic, right? Any props, you know, Nuggets, wins also. I know they're, they're in a rough stretch, but they're always good. Nikola Jokic especially. So if you want to bet props to Nikola Jokic, head over to FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Shoot your shot. FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NBA. We're back. It's our final segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Ostreicher still here with you. I really appreciate you tuning in and making Locked On Ravens your first listen each and every day. If you're enjoying the content, really appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and the like button or an audio form. Hit the subscribe button or follow along button wherever you get your podcast. It's the same show, both audio and video. So if you want to listen one day and then watch another, you're not missing out on any content. The bonus episodes come out any which way. And it's really exciting what we're building here on Locked On Ravens. Even in the offseason, we're going to be getting into big free agent talk, obviously, in this segment. But then moving forward, we're going to do a mini offseason preview, general full encompassing of everything tomorrow. And then we're going to have a lot of other content as well for agents who the Ravens could bring in from other teams. The draft, we're going to be doing stuff as well. So don't want to miss out on any of that. If you're an everydayer, thanks so much for tuning into the content here. Really appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, welcome in. Hopefully you are enjoying the content. If somewhere in the middle, Welcome back to the show. You can follow me on Twitter at Cash 34 on Instagram at Cash 34 as well. I'm trying to build up that Instagram a lot. So really appreciate all the support here. Let's get into some free agents. The Ravens have a massive list of free agents. And as we talked about, not going to be the same team for Baltimore in 2024, unfortunately. I'll read through the guys, and then we'll get into who I personally believe the Ravens should keep. And then we'll also dive into a couple of hypotheticals that we got from Bleacher Report. So, list of free agents in 2024 for the Ravens. Justin Matabike, Patrick Queen, Dino Stone, Jadavian Clowney, Kyle Van Noy, Kevin Zeitler, Otto Beckham Jr., Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, Ronald Darby, Arthur Millette, Nelson Aguilar, John Simpson, Tyler Huntley, Brent Urban, Dalvin Cook, Devin Duvernay, Malik Harrison, Rocky Yassin, Daryl Worley, Delshawn Phillips, Sam Mustafer, Josh Johnson, Laquan Treadwell, Tyler Ott, Nardarius Washington. Washington is an RFA. Long list. Long, long, long list. And it's not just a long list. It's a quality list. There are quality names on that list. I think to me, 
where you got to start is Justin Matabike. You bring him back. You, you have to. You cannot let Justin Matabike walk out of that door, whether it's franchise tagging him and working on an extension. They haven't told July to do that if they do. I, I don't see him playing on the franchise tag. The franchise tag is 20.9 or is projected to be 20.9 million for a defensive lineman for one year. I think Matabike cleared 25 annually, in my opinion. And you want the long term stability if you're a player. And obviously, the bigger dollar value works out. So I would hope Baltimore is able to sign him to an extension, whether they have to franchise tag him first or not. But interior pass rush is just so hard to find. And the Ravens have been looking for a guy like this really since Elodie Nada left the building. So uh, I'm excited to hopefully have Matt Abike in Baltimore for a long time. You look at both Patrick Queen and Geno Stone, big parts of the Ravens' success in 2023. We've seen both those guys, honestly, not just Queen, both Queen and Stone grow into their roles. Queen, somebody that has grown. He, he was growing by himself before Roquan got there, but then obviously he and Roquan have turned into one of the best inside linebacker duos in the NFL. Then you have Geno Stone, who's had a fill-in for Marcus Williams in big-time games, big-time snaps for the past two seasons, and obviously career-high interceptions last year. I think both those guys, look, it would be great to have them back, but I'm not projecting them back, especially Queen. I think you can make an argument for bringing Geno Stone back as a you know third safety type of guy, but Geno Stone's earned a starting role. He's earned a lot of money, so I don't think he's going to be back, unfortunately, for the Ravens there. Clowney and Van Noy, interesting. I would anticipate at least one comes back. Wouldn't be shocked if one leaves. I think both those guys have earned maybe two, a two-year deal worth some big money in there. So can the Ravens afford to bring both those guys back? We'll see. It'd be great to have them. Both guys were veteran leaders, and look, I mean, exceeded expectations. So I would I would anticipate maybe Van Noy is back and Clowney isn't. Maybe that's what I'll say for that. I mean, I would love both of them back, but I guess that's my early projection on that. Ravens reportedly are in talks with Kevin Zeitler to come back. I think that's a must-have for them, and it, it looks like that will be the case. Obviously nothing confirmed yet, but early good sign that there are some talks for that going on right now. Otto Beckham Jr., I could see him coming back, but it would have to be on a much smaller contract and the role, depending on who Baltimore brings in, that that's going to be another question. So we'll see with Odell. Gus and JK, I could honestly, this might be a hot take. I could see both guys not coming back. It would be awesome if they did, but the Ravens have Justice Hill, who was great for them this year. Keaton Mitchell is going to come back at some point. So uh, if the Ravens go the, the Derrick Henry route, or the Saquon Barkley route, or the Josh Jacobs route, you have three quality running backs right there. Maybe you draft a guy or bring in another undrafted free agent to wait until Mitchell comes back. You run a Derrick Henry, Justice Hill backfield, Saquon, so et cetera. At that point, I'm not sure Gus or JK returns. So that's going to be an interesting storyline to watch this offseason. Ronald Darby and Arthur Millette, I'd be fine with both those guys back. I, I definitely want Ronald Darby back if I were the Ravens just because he was so good for them in a cheap role. Definitely earned some money. Not going to be as cheap this time around. But Darby was awesome for them. Nelson Aguilar, I'd love to have Nelson Aguilar back. I think he was the perfect veteran leader. Not that Odell wasn't a leader, but he was a perfect veteran guy in that locker room for the Ravens in that position. John Simpson, I'd be fine with as a backup, but I'm personally not starting him. Tyler Huntley, I don't think is going to be back. Brent Urban, I could see him coming back on a you know minimum, and he could play a little bit. Dalvin, I don't. I mean, I don't see him back also. I mean, maybe you bring him in to be a third running back, and you can wait for Keaton to come back. I could possibly see that working out for him. Devin DuVernay, Malik Harrison, Rocky Asin, I don't see any of those guys back. Honestly, I think Harrison's going to earn a role somewhere. DuVernay, I just don't think did enough. I mean, you could bring him back as a returner, but he's going to probably want some money. Then Yassin obviously just did not work out. Daryl Worley, I, I could, the Ravens like him a lot. I could see him coming back. Delshawn Phillips and Sam Mustafer, maybe his depth pieces. Josh Johnson, I think, is probably on the way out. Laquan Treadwell, I, I don't think he'll be back. Tyler Ott, I don't think he'll be back either, as the Ravens had Nick Moore coming back. And our Darius Washington, I, I definitely want the Ravens to bring him back as well. So a lot, lot of decisions for Baltimore to make here is that they're going to probably – they're, they're going to lose three to five really key contributors to that defense. And then maybe a two to three big contributors on offense. Going to be really interesting to see what positions they prioritize, but priority I definitely think has to go to Justin Matabike in this situation. And let's round it out with some Bleacher Report hypotheticals. Bleacher Report named three possible trade targets for the Ravens, Panthers, Edge, Brian Burns, Seahawks wide receiver, Tyra Lockett, and Colts defensive lineman, DeForest Buckner. I think Burns would be awesome. He'd be great. I mean, Adafi Owe, Brian Burns, David Ajabo, that, that's a really solid three. 
in my opinion. Burns is a stud, and we know that. So Burns will be awesome, but it will probably cost him a first-round pick and maybe a young player. So we'll see. Tyler Lockett, I, I, I like Lockett, but I just don't think it's the, it's the receiver I'd want to see. I'd rather have DK Metcalf. I'd rather have Cortland Sutton. I don't know, Chris Godwin. I mean, there, there are some other receivers I'd rather have on the Ravens that aren't Tyler Lockett. I'm not saying Lockett isn't good. He's he still is good, but he's a little on the shorter side for what I think the Ravens need right now. And he's a he's somebody that could be valuable. But if, if I was looking to trade for a wide receiver, I'd look more to the Cortland Sutton type or a DK Metcalf type in terms of body and skill set. The Forrest Buckner, I think, is is fine, but the Ravens don't necessarily, if they bring back Matabike. They don't need to trade for a defensive lineman. And, you know, it's more in the fact, though, if Matabike doesn't come back, he can try to replace that production with Buckner. But, again, if Matabike comes back, there's really no need for that with Travis Jones there, Michael Pierce coming back, Roger Washington. So, interesting scenarios there. Baltimore maybe will make a trade or two this offseason. The Ravens are going to have to get creative with Lamar Jackson's contract and all the phrases they're going to have to make decisions on. That's all I have for you here today, though, on Locked on Ravens. Thanks so much for tuning in. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel here. Follow along in order for more five days a week of Ravens content so you don't have to miss out on any Ravens this offseason. Now, we're waiting a long time for Ravens football to come back, but we're going to have you covered here on Locked on Ravens. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at CashRacker34, Instagram at CashRacker34 as well for more Ravens daily content on social media. Stay tuned. We're coming back tomorrow with an off-season preview, so be sure to stay tuned. We'll see you right back here tomorrow on Locked on Ravens.